I'm going to say overrated. Um, listen, they're 10 0. They're undefeated. We understand that. Uh, Nick Fitzpatrick is an absolute stud. Just, just deal with it, Ryan. Just deal with it, man. Suck it up. Just deal with it. Nick Fitzpatrick is an absolute stud. I get all of that. Um, I'm very, very worried because Ryan Clark is missing something that's very, very important. What's the measuring stick, Max and Molly and 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 uh, and Ryan Clark? And I appreciate that Super Bowl trophy. Thank you very much, even though you retired a Redskin. But we'll deal with that later. Here's the bottom line: <laughs> um, the Kansas City Chiefs are the standard. You're talk. When I look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm asking myself, what are the chances? That this number three defense against the pass, this number seven defense against the rush, the number one defense in points allowed in the entire NFL. What are they going to do with those brothers? That's my measuring stick. So when I look at it from that perspective and I see the Steelers bending a lot, but not necessarily breaking. I'm seeing your boy, Ben Roethlisberger, even though he's playing like an MVP candidate, in a game, in a time in the season where one mistake or two mistakes would definitely cost you. I'm seeing some of the things that he does, some interceptions that should have taken place, some ill-advised throws, et cetera, et cetera. It makes me a bit nervous. The Steelers are a big-time team. I'm very proud of them. I know I know they're going to go to the playoffs. I believe they'll be win proud. at least a proud. game in the playoffs. But I'm looking at them, and the measuring stick is what are their chances to knock off the Kansas City Chiefs? And if I think those chances are slim to none and we're looking at them overrated and talking about them at 16-0, and 0, How they forgive overrated, me if it though? gives me cause to pause. That's where I'm at. Well, I didn't say they were overrated. They said, are you leaning more towards underrated or overrated? When you look at them no, being they're, undefeated, they're, they're... you're talking about a team that could go 16-0. and 0. You're talking about, oh, my God, Super Bowl champions. I don't view them that way. I just don't. First of all, Ryan, let me explain. I, I am loath to defend Stephen A. Smith, but let me explain what's the psychology, what's going on. He's a Steelers fan. He's trying not to jinx him. Stephen A., I see what you're doing. Don't worry about that, man. I got you. The bottom line is if you're forced to say either under or overrated, what are they closer to? The answer is they're closer to underrated because no one really believes in them. And this is something I've ta I talked you. about this theory before on the air. With teams or with fighters, Ryan, I know you're big into combat sports. Stephen A., so are you. With teams or with fighters, overwhelming offense will always be overrated. Because when they come up against mediocrity, mediocrity can't do anything to stave off the overwhelming offense. They get blown away. But great well-roundedness, mediocrity can hang around with it for a while, not get as embarrassed as when they go up against, you know, overwhelming offense. So... What did this Pittsburgh Steelers do in the two games they had on the schedule that were tough, right? In their tough games, Ravens and Titans, they won them both. And those are very tough games, but they were close. You know what they reminded me of? The way the New England Patriots used to win games for so many years, right? Especially before Tom Brady became the crazy, you know, record-setting passing Tom Brady and was much more of a game manager first part of his career, right? The Patriots would win like that, and you got the feeling every time, like, damn, that other team was more talented. How did they just do that? What about when they played the greatest show on turf? Greatest show on turf. Oh, my God, what an offense. As usual, great overwhelming offense. Patriots really well-rounded, but they beat them. Guys, why do you think Evander Holyfield was such a big underdog against Mike Tyson once upon a time? Great well-roundedness versus great overwhelming offense. But the well-rounded fighter or team is usually underrated. It is the case here. The Steelers are, are excellent against the run. They're excellent defensively, period. They've had some special team struggles recently, but when they needed the special teams to show up, they did against the Titans. That was the difference in the game. Offensively, we know what they can do. They have some dynamism on offense. Big Ben's been playing well. They had experience there under center. Guys, the Pittsburgh Steelers are probably the most well-rounded team in the NFL, and that's why people don't really believe but i'm telling you right now they're among the best teams and if i have to say are they over or under they are underrated 
Listen, I, I agree with Max. I believe they're underrated because we aren't talking about this team. We, we are talking about this team in the way that you just did, Stephen A. No one is singing the 2007 New England Patriots praise. No one's saying that this team will have Mercury Morris crying in his champagne. Mercury Morris won't get to make a rap about the 72 Dolphins. Nobody's saying that. Because we're watching them play games and we're watching them make plays in situational football moments that allow them to win. They aren't blowing people out. It's not pretty. Patrick Mahomes isn't playing quarterback or Russell Wilson isn't playing quarterback. But all they've done is 10 times they've lined up people in front of them and 10 times they've beaten that team. Because what happens is sometimes you're going to have a bad day. Every now and then you have a letdown. But there's only been one team in the entire NFL that has never had such a big letdown that they caught an L. This is a very good football team. And Mika Fitzpatrick, and I have been back and forth with him. At the beginning of the year, he wasn't making the plays on the football. And I was like, I don't know if the tips can continue. And dude just finds the ball. Dude just makes plays. T.J. Watt is going to be a perennial defensive player of the year contender. Cam Hayward is a stalwart in the middle. And then offensively, and you, you, you watched the game last night, right? The Kansas City Chiefs won because the Las Vegas Raiders scored too fast. That's it. So when you see Aguilar and you see Ruggs and you see Josh Jacobs and you see Darren Waller get loose on the Kansas City Chiefs, you got to think Chase Claypool, Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, James Washington, that these dudes can get loose as well, but they can actually play defense. So when you compare them to the Kansas City Chiefs, I think they compare favorably. And when you look at a team like the New Orleans Saints, I think you look at those two teams and you think about Drew Brees and you say, you know what? These are probably the two most well-rounded football teams in football. The reason we like the Kansas City Chiefs over everybody else, which we should, is because of their quarterback. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.